Hey guys, it's Andres again. So, we're starting the week with a pretty big project. I'm gonna be trenching, but it's a terrible day to be trenching outside. It is raining a lot. It's been raining for about a day and a half and the weather calls for more rain. Basically 100% of all of today, most of tomorrow. So I decided I had the reservation already to get the machine. I was just gonna go do it and I'm just gonna get soaking wet, very muddy. It's gonna be a little mess. More important though, it's my first time using a trencher machine. It's a big trencher machine. I didn't expect it to be this big. I thought it was gonna be a smaller, like the lawnmower style, that you kind of walk behind it or whatever. But uh, this thing, it's massive. I should have known that when they told me that it comes with its own trailer. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll take my own trailer and pick it up. But this thing, it's like a mini tank. I believe that's a 24 inch. It's a 24 inch blade, so you can uh, go 24 inches deep, which is great for my water pipe. That's how, that's how deep it should go. The electrical line is to be 18 inches deep. The sewer line doesn't really matter, but it's probably gonna end up being about a foot deep. At least that's what uh, the depth right now is for the other sewer line that I gotta connect to. Uh, the guy showed me the controls. It looked easy for him. Uh, I'm gonna see if I remember how to do it, but I'll get this thing out of the trailer, start playing with it. Wow, okay, this machine is amazing. <laughs> um, it's been uh, 15 minutes and I've already done this whole trench right here. About 18 inches deep, about four inches wide, perfect for my sewer pipe. This is such a joke. I don't think I will ever dig a trench again. <laughs> I mean, it is $150 to rent that machine for the day, 24 hours. But um, a few weeks ago, uh, when I was looking for the septic lines in a different video, you saw me digging forever. I dug a trench about eight feet wide and about two foot deep, just like this one. And it took me probably two or three hours. Um, it was a very slow process. The, this dirt is like very clay and very heavy. And this machine doesn't care. This machine doesn't care about rocks. It doesn't care about anything. Probably doesn't care about pipes. So you gotta watch out for pipes. But there's nothing here. And if there is, it shouldn't be here because I don't know what, where it's going to. So, but uh, this machine is amazing. <laughs> it is so much fun. It's not as hard to use as I thought. It's very controlled. So it's easy. Wow. This is not gonna take me very long. It's not gonna be as messy as I thought either. I don't think. What a cool machine. Okay, I went to take a shower because uh, that black jacket I was wearing is not waterproof and I was completely wet. Now I have a different non-waterproof jacket but it should help me finish the job electrical line is basically done that's where i'm gonna stop i need to do the rest by hand or i'm gonna break something um <laughs> they're full of water <laughs> that's a foot and a half right there just water um the next one is two foot deep for the pipe the water pipe it's about to get them filled up and this is the sewer pipe it's getting pretty full as well but whatever, I'll have to let it dry uh, in the next week. And I was able to find the septic tank. That was cool, since I had no idea where it was. So I was able to locate that. So the last thing I got to do right now is go 
from here to the house. It's kind of a scary part because right there is the the electrical main from the panel to the house. So I'm, I'm gonna have to leave a, a good section of it to do by hand so I don't break anything. Good morning. So the plan today is to do the pad and the carpet in both lofts. And then I'm gonna start hanging light fixtures because we've started receiving a bunch of stuff from Amazon. Basically every day we get a box. I don't know how to do carpet. I have a rough idea, but I don't have the tools to do it and to make it nice and stretch and to put that nailing board in the perimeter. So I'm going very, very simple and I'm just laying down the pad with staples and then I'm gonna lay out the carpet on top with a few screws on the perimeter and that's it. Majority of the square footage of this carpet is gonna be covered by a twin mattress. So really there's only a little bit of carpet left over but we wanted to make sure it was comfortable when you get up there to go on your knees and get some padding on your knees. Um, so that's the idea. But this is not by any means a really good professional install of carpet. Okay, the pad is ready. That was not very difficult. I also put it on the back side of the door and I can already feel how much more comfortable it is to be on my knees in there. This is about a, a dollar a foot. Now over here on this side, it's gonna be exposed so I don't wanna be able to see that. So I'm gonna put a piece of wood right here. Uh, just like that piece of wood right there. Okay, so both lofts are now done and carpeted. I'm, uh, I'm getting started with the light fixtures, securing the outlets up there. So that's gonna be the light fixture for each loft. So the project for today is um, to try to get as much as the water uh, pipes connected as I can. Before I can connect them all and bury it, I need to put heat tape and some of this pipe insulation. The reason I'm putting heat tape, the main line is not going to need it because that's going to be right about two foot depth, so it's never going to freeze. But this pipe's right here under the shed, the pipe going to the bathtub and the pipes going to the shower all need to be insulated because they're either very shallow dirt or they're fully exposed really uh, and it's gonna get very cold in the winter and I could freeze and break some pipes so that's my plan I laid out some uh, plastic on the floor and that plastic is gonna stay there forever uh, basically just to if I have to crawl down there in the future it's not all nasty full of spiders and snakes I don't know it gives me a little more confidence that it's easy 
to service the underneath of the shed in the future or if I want to add an outlet or add a pipe whatever that may be that plastic will help keep that area a little cleaner and it's making it pretty easy right now to just slide down there uh, as I go taping the heat wire so this is the product I bought it's automatic so it's just a power cord and I don't know if that's a thermostat I think that may be a thermostat I think it is and then this wire I just tape it to the pipe then I throw the insulation on top plug this in and anytime the temperature of the pipe falls under 40 degrees it will turn on or 38 degrees something like that it will turn on so it will keep pipes from freezing I'm not sure if it spends a lot of power I wouldn't think so but typically heating it, it is it is expensive but it's cheaper than breaking pipes in the middle of the winter and people not having water and me having to crawl down there in the winter and fixing it so a dollar a foot is basically the price of this power cord um, yeah about a dollar a foot So here's a project I'm pretty proud of. It's the water heater closet on the back side. And I think it looks kind of nice. And I was able to find a red piece of roof that matches the barn. I lined it with plastic because I don't want this to get wet inside since the shower is on the other side of this wall. And then it rains a lot. So I just put a, a wall of plastic. Then I'm going to layer this with insulation around the water heater. Now the idea for the water heater was to buy a small tankless electric water heater. They take very little room, they only heat the water as, as it needs in demand and they're pretty efficient. Um, but the problem was the amount of electricity that it needs, it's outrageous. Um, really for new houses where those are used in a, for, a big residential, for a big residential project, you need a lot of amps to supply that, that appliance. So after talking to the electrician, um, the amperage that I have wasn't going to be enough for that, uh, for that water heater. So I went with just the traditional conventional elect electric uh, water heater with a big tank, 50 gallon tank. So that's why I have this water closet down here. I was trying not to have anything back here, but it's okay. It's not going to be that visible anyway. Okay, so water heater is in, the electrical connection is made, electrical is off until I have this full of water. Um, I uh, have my two lines, the in the cold water and the out hot water. I have my holes right here for both of those pipes, but that's all I can do for now because I'm out of three quarter inch um, 
sea PVC. So I'll have to go grab some more of that. Now, I'm very, very close to being done with the plumbing. Over here I got my sewer line. I just gotta tie it in and connect it all the way down. My supply line from the house. I still have to lay it all the to lay all the pipe. The worst part is I have to redig by hand a lot of this trench because the rain was brutal. Brutal, brutal. The rain was brutal. The rain was really bad. And I'm gonna have to redig a lot of that trench. Um, to make sure it's two foot deep and uh, right there I still got to do some digging because that's where the main line of uh, sewer and power goes to the house so I have to go do that by hand very slowly make sure I don't break anything and then I can make my connection right there to the water that's coming from the well the well is on the other side of the house so it's a little inefficient Okay, I'm gonna call it a day, but um, I'll show you around. A few little details I've been working on. These are the exterior lights. Those are all connected to a timer. So they all come on together. What I'm probably gonna do, this light bulb right here that's on the door, I'm probably gonna make it a softer light bulb so it doesn't attract as many bugs and let the bugs go over there and hang out. So when people walk by here, don't have to walk through a cloud of bugs. Now this door is painted pretty strong color we'll see how it looks we may, may need to send it down a little bit make it a little more rough look more rustic so the fans have been awesome both of those are installed they have three speeds very easy just right here they're really really nice they move a lot of air then small little details I got the handle done for the sauna it couldn't be anything metal since it would burn your hand and it would get really hot but that's done this pipe again i run out of a three quarter inch pipe so that's all i could do but i did connect the shower i have been insulating the pipes underneath and i laid all the plastic down uh oh sewer pipe came off that's not good i'm gonna have to re-glue that hmm. i wonder what i did to break that I mean, I was crawling underneath here and I might have put too much pressure. Then inside, I covered up all the electrical conduit and cables that go up and down right there. So I'm going to paint that gray afterwards. Bathroom door is done. Here, why should I turn off this? So bathroom door is done. Um, we put a little latch, something easy to lock. I'm just gonna get a handle right here. I don't want to use a rope because I think it's not hygienic enough. So uh, I like to just put a metal handle. Now in here, you can see the ropes right there sticking out. I made uh, handles with the rope. I was able to finish my connections to the sewer pipe. I was missing a couple of connections there. And then I was missing valves, but now those valves are installed. Hopefully I did the correct cold to hot. If not, I'll have to swap them around. So as you can see, the place is taking shape. We're getting so close to the end as we put finishing details. I'm excited to do, I'm excited to be done with the inside work so we can clean it up. We're gonna paint the floor. We already have a color. I don't even know what it was. I think it was a green, dark green of some sort. Um, and then, yeah, we can start throwing mattresses in here. It's, it doesn't seem real that we're gonna be putting sheets and towels and plates and all that stuff once it's nice and clean. So we're getting really, really close. We're trying to get done in one more week. We'll see if we can do a big push and get it all done. That'll be nice. We are Andres and Chelsea. We uprooted our lives from Arizona to Eastern Tennessee. We sold our long-term rentals and are putting everything on the line to start our dream glamping business. Join us each week as our family navigates this big new adventure and we share everything we learn so you can also build a successful glamping business.